Hey there folks, today we're going to be showing you how to replace the rear ABS wheel speed sensor on all 2010 through 2017 Chevy Equinoxes. Now with the vehicle safely jacked up and on axle stands and the wheel off, we're going to have to remove the caliper and rotor to start. So we're just going to get you a better camera angle and get started with the service. Alright, so first we have to remove these two 14 mil bolts that hold the caliper on. This one you may need either an open end wrench or a swivel just to not get in the way of the brake line. And now the caliper will slide off. And we're just going to set it safely aside at the back without kinking the hose. All right, next our pads come out. If you are reusing them, just be careful with them. All right, and next we're going to remove these two 15 mil bolts that hold on the caliper mounting bracket. And your bracket will come off. All right, then we need to remove this Torx T30 screw to get the rotor off. All right, so just make sure that your parking brake is off because if you have the parking brake on, the shoes will be pushing against the inside of the drum and you won't be able to get it off. All right, so we gently set our rotor aside. All right, so we're going to remove this spring right here. We're gonna use some needle nose pliers to get it off. All right, next we have these two retaining pins. We're going to remove those with our pliers as well. So we're going to squeeze and then we're going to push it in and twist it until it pops off. Just be careful it doesn't shoot away on you. And if you see, there's these little clips just reach in behind and pull them out. All right, next we carefully spread the shoes apart and take off our adjuster here. All right, so now all that's left is to remove this bottom spring right here. All right, now the shoes will come off. All right, so all these raised edges are where the parking brake shoes slide on so we're going to clean them with the wire brush as well as this piece right here this mechanism where the cable attaches because this is the most corroded piece since it's the most exposed then we're going to use some brake cleaner and clean all this brake dust off All right, so to get this sensor off, we first have the harness up here. Now, I could be mistaken, put in the comments if you know this, but there should be a pinch point right at the back of the harness here. Mine doesn't have that. Mine actually just comes right out. So I may have to fix that. Then once you have that harness off, you're going to take off this 3 16 Allen screw. Now we're going to Pull out our sensor. Our grommet will come out as well. Just make sure the hole 
where the grommet goes is nice and clean. Then we're going to put our new sensor back in. I'm just going to put my old one in. So we put our grommet in. And we push the grommet into place. Pull our harness out the back here. Gently place our sensor in. Put our Allen screw back in. Just go snug, not too tight. Just one finger, nice little tight pull. And then, again, mine seems to be broken, but when you reattach your harness, just push it, should click, and just make sure when you pull yours that it doesn't pop back out. All right, so if you're like me and you have a broken tab on your sensor, just take a zip tie, stick it into the side of the harness. This is just a temporary fix till you can get the harness fixed. It's not a permanent fix, but it'll get us back on the road. And then we're going to push that down as tight as we can. So that will hold that nice and tight into place. And then we just trim off the excess so it doesn't catch on anything. All right, now I'm gonna be putting my old brake shoes back in. However, if you have new brake shoes, obviously put those in, but it's gonna be the same process. So we're gonna start by putting a little brake grease on all these raised edges, because as I said before, the shoes ride on those edges. So just a thin layer on each. All right, now to prevent future corrosion, I'm gonna spray some fluid film just on our cable right here. Don't go too much because you don't want it flinging off. Just a small amount on each side. All right, so you put your parking shoes on the same way they came off. So if you see there's two different designs, put them facing like this. There is only one way it can go because your retaining clip sits higher up. So if you have it on backwards, you won't be able to get the retaining clip on and you'll just know to flip it the other way. But just put them on like this and you'll be good to go. You have your groove right at the bottom here. will go into your parking brake cable right here and the other groove will go into the bottom just below it. All right, so next you look on the other side of the hole here where you got your retaining pin here. And we're going to slide that through. You put your spring on. Then you're going to grab your cap. And there's a little slit in it here. It matches with the slit on the retaining pin. We're just going to twist it 90 degrees. All right, we're gonna do the same with the rear facing shoe. All right, so I like to put the retaining pin in the back first. Helps guide everything into place a little easier. Put your spring on. Then we're going to push on our retainer. Twist it 90 degrees. Then we get the springs on. All right, so for a more clear understanding of how this looks, your first groove goes into your cable and the other piece just goes into there like that. And that's how it'll look on your shoes. All right, so we have our adjuster here. If you wanna take it apart all the way, unthread this, clean up the threads and put a little fluid film on it or lubrication of some sort so it is spinning nicely and prevents future corrosion. Now the free floating piece goes towards the front of the vehicle. 
and your threaded piece goes towards the rear of the vehicle. And we're going to set it into the grooves of the shoes here. Then we're going to take our smallest of the two springs, put it in the holes where you got the spring out of. Then we gotta get the bottom spring in. All right, so now your cable mechanism is sitting right here. You're just going to slide your spring over top like that. Put it into one of the two holes, doesn't matter which. And use your needle nose to pull it in. All right, so just a quick note, if you put the spring in the front shoe, it's for some reason a little bit easier to pull it towards the back shoe. All right, so if you want to adjust the parking shoes, you push down and you'll see there's a small gap in there, gets larger as you push down. Then when you push up on it, on those same teeth, that gap gets smaller, which will bring the shoes in. So I'm gonna show you how to adjust them while the rotors are on. But for now, we're gonna make sure the shoes are all the way in. So push up all the way until that's fully retracted. All right, and then we take our rotor, and then we have a tapered hole right here. Match that up with your threaded hole right there. That'll house your T30 screw. Snug this down nice and tight just by hand. All right, so now if you look at your rotor, you'll have this rubber piece here, a little grommet. You just remove that grommet, and then you have the hole facing about the 12 o'clock position. And this is a bit big, but you'll grab a thin flat blade screwdriver, reach it into the hole, and push it up or down according to which way you need to go to adjust your shoes. And you want to spin the rotor you can hear it just starting to bite on the rotor. That's exactly where you want it. Once you're done, you push your grommet back on. Now we're going to get our pads and uh, caliper back on now. All right, so anytime you do anything with brakes, always take the hardware clips off. And we're just going to wire brush all the metal surfaces here. Just make sure when you do that you don't hit the rubber boots and then it'll be good and clean. All right, we're just gonna pop out the slider pins, clean them up and re-grease them. All right, when you do this, you just wanna make sure that they do pump in and out and you'll be good to go. All right, so with your caliper mounting bracket all cleaned up, just put a little grease in between your hardware clips here. I just did that off of camera. Now we're going to put our bracket back on and tighten it down to 140 foot-pounds of torque. All right, then we're going to take our pads, put them into place. Then our caliper will go into place as well. So if you are putting new brakes on when you do this, just collapse the spring with a C-clamp, just squeeze it and push it back in. But these are the same pads, so this should fit. 
decently back over top. Then we're going to put the caliper bolts in at 20 foot pounds. And if your slider pins want to free spin, just use a pair of vice grips to hold them in place while you torque the back bolt. All right, folks, so that's all there is to it. Torque your wheels down to 140 foot pounds of torque and get your vehicle back on the ground safely and take it for a test spin and see how it goes. Hopefully you found this helpful. And as always, please don't forget to like and subscribe.